In this video, I'm going to show you how to write and balance chemical equations for synthesis reactions. So what is a synthesis reaction? Well, it's one of many types of chemical reactions, and the generic formula looks something like this. So if we have a generic equation, we get A plus B gives you AB. One thing to note here is that you're going to have more than one reactant. It doesn't have to be two, it doesn't have to be three, but it has to be more than one reactant. You will also have only one product in a synthesis reaction. So more simple, smaller pieces get put together to make one more complicated product. Let's take a look at a real example of a synthesis reaction. Here I'm going to be burning strips of magnesium. Now magnesium is a shiny silvery metal and when I react it with oxygen gas during the burning process, it turns into magnesium oxide, which is a white powder. The reactants and products do not have very similar physical characteristics. That's one way that you can tell that a chemical reaction took place. So let's take a look at the chemical equation for this reaction. We have magnesium and oxygen on the left as reactants. Now remember, oxygen is diatomic. It doesn't like to exist alone. So we're going to most often find it in nature as O2 instead of just O. Magnesium and oxygen will combine to form magnesium oxide. So we have an element, magnesium, combining with another element, oxygen, to form a compound, magnesium oxide. Now let's record the physical characteristics of each component in this reaction. We have magnesium, which is shiny and silvery and a solid. We have oxygen, which is a gas at room temperature. And then we have magnesium oxide, which is a white powder that doesn't have the same properties as a metal. Now let's dive in and see what's going on with the charges during this reaction. Magnesium is an element, which means it has no charge. Oxygen is an element also, which means it has no charge. But when they combine together, they form a compound. And this is an ionic compound because we have a metal and a nonmetal, a cation and an anion. When magnesium forms an ion, it has a positive two charge. When oxygen forms an ion, it has a negative two charge. When we combine these, we combine them at a one-to-one -one ratio to cancel out the charges. A positive two and a negative two means we only need one of each. When the charges change during a chemical reaction, that's because there was a transfer of electrons. Magnesium lost electrons and oxygen gained electrons. This is also an oxidation reduction reaction. And you're going to find that many of the types of reactions we go over are also oxidation reduction reactions. Oxidation is when electrons are lost and reduction is when electrons are gained and they go together in this reaction. Now I want you to pause the video and write and balance the equation for the synthesis of sodium chloride. Now it's really important that you actually work through this question before you see the answer. That way you can go in and diagnose any mistakes that you made along the way. So we're going to write the reaction and balance the equation for the synthesis of sodium chloride. Now sodium chloride is an ionic compound because it contains a metal and a nonmetal, or a cation and an anion. Sodium, when it becomes an ion, forms a positive one charge. And chlorine, when it forms an ion, forms a negative one charge. So we have a positive one sodium and a negative one chloride. That means that when we put them together, we're going to get NaCl. They'll combine in a one to one ratio. That is going to be our product. That is what we are synthesizing. That is what we are making. So that is going to go on the right side of the arrow. The elements that make this up, sodium and chlorine, will go on the left side of the arrow. We're going to write sodium, which can exist in an individual atom, and chlorine, which is diatomic, so we have to include the little 2 as a subscript. Once we have the entire equation written out perfectly, we can balance it. We will always balance our equations at the very end by adding coefficients so that the atoms on both sides are equivalent. So because chlorine is diatomic, there are two chlorines on the left side of this equation, which means I'm going to add two units of sodium chloride on the right. So I have one molecule of chlorine and two units of sodium chloride. Because I have two units of sodium chloride, I need to make sure I have two atoms of sodium on the left to balance that out. So now I should have two atoms of sodium on both sides and two atoms of chlorine on both sides. Now let's take a look at the 
physical descriptions of our reactants and products. Here we have sodium, okay? So it's a metal, it's shiny, silvery, good conductor of heat and electricity, and it's actually really soft. But the cool thing about sodium is that when you throw it in water, it reacts with the water and explodes. So we have this very highly explosive metal combining with chlorine, which is a yellow green poisonous gas. And when these two very reactive ingredients mix together, what we get is table salt. Something that you sprinkle on your french fries that you don't think of reacting in the way that both sodium and chlorine do. That should just show you the vast differences between the physical characteristics of the reactants versus the products. Now the last question that you're gonna practice on is writing and balancing the equation for the synthesis of water. Pause the video, make sure that you write out the whole equation and balance it before you turn the video back on. That way you can diagnose any mistakes that you make. Okay, let's see how you did. So if we're writing the equation for the synthesis of water, that means we are creating water, which means it's our product, which means it goes on the right side of the arrow. All right, we're creating water with hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is diatomic and oxygen is diatomic. So we need to include those subscripts to ensure that we are communicating that those two are diatomic elements. Once we get the entire reaction written correctly, we can balance it using coefficients. So because oxygen is diatomic, we have two oxygens on the left and we only have one on the right. So I'm gonna add a two coefficient in front of our water. So if for every one molecule of oxygen, we're going to create two molecules of water. Now, because I added a two to that water, we have four hydrogens on the right. In order to get up to four hydrogens on the left, we need to add a coefficient of a two in front of the hydrogen. So we have two molecules of hydrogen reacting with one molecule of oxygen to create two molecules of water. I love this reaction and the reason I love this reaction so much is because you can really see how the properties are different in the reactant side versus the product side. Let's take a look at the reactants. We have hydrogen which burns like crazy, it's a super explosive gas. And we have oxygen which is a gas that supports hydrogen's burning, it supports combustion. It doesn't actually burn itself but it allows other things to burn. Then what we do is when we combine them chemically together, we get water, which is the very chemical that we put on fires to try to get them to stop burning. These reactants and products could not be more different from each other, which is what makes this reaction so interesting. So now that you've watched this video, you should be able to write and balance a synthesis equation. A synthesis reaction is just combining different pieces and putting them together to make one final, more complex product.